Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. The second GOP presidential debate is in the books. Record ratings for CNN, and it did not disappoint. All eyes were on Donald Trump, but before the debate, here's what he said about his plan of attack. I think I could tone it down a little bit when pressed. Uh, I think I have a great temperament. I've had a great temperament. You couldn't build a great business like I built if you didn't have good temperament. But I think maybe I can sometimes tone it down. When somebody hits you, you can hit a little bit less hard. But a little less hard is exactly what he didn't do right out of the gate. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11. He's got 1% in the polls. And how he got up here, there's far too many people. I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. The only time Trump quieted down was when the discussion turned to foreign policy. Jack, how did Trump do overall? You thought he could get the nomination. I still think that oh, overall very well, Morris. I think, you know, there's 11 ships against one when you're out, uh, 10 ships against one, when you're out gunned by a thousand percent. And last time he didn't have everybody gunning for him. This time he did. I think under those things, uh, under those conditions, he did exceptionally well to the extent there was a winner. And I don't know that you can have a winner when you have 11 people in crosstalk and cross battles. It's like a, the old time 90s cable debate shows. To the extent there was a winner, I do confer with the conventional wisdom. It was Carly Fiorina. We'll get to her in a second. But Mark, why pick on Rand Paul? I mean, so what if he's got one percent? <laughs> didn't Bush? Did, didn't didn't he uh, look? Trump look like a bully? Well, I think he did, particularly when I thought Rand Paul actually had a very good evening. He talked about the fact that Trump's insults were sophomoric, that you know, arguing that someone is tall or short or fat or ugly was something came out of junior high. I thought Rand Paul had a good point, and then he turns around and says, "I don't attack you on your looks, Rand Paul, but I could." Yeah. It, it just he, he he's like he said, "You're a bully," and then Donald Trump walked right into well, that. Well, remember it, though, it was like the time when Fiorina said, and this was a really dramatic point. We'll get to that. We'll, too, we'll get to that. But yeah, I thought we'll it was the same idea. Yeah. Donald Trump is tone deaf. He doesn't understand when his insults yeah. are Well, fire. remember, though, Donald Trump is playing a character. And to, to an extent, True. America likes that. Remember, this is a country, not to indict our own nation, but this is a country who loves reality TV. To an extent, Donald Trump's whole life is one big sophomore, sophomore exercise agree, that has been enormous point, success. We want that character to get seri serious and give us some specifics, and we'll see if that'll play out. Now, I think Donald Trump reached a limit last night. I really do. I think uh, his poll, he's ahead still, but not quite by as much. He was getting close to 30. Now he's down to about 24. Yeah, I, think, I, I think he's reached his peak. Well, Sparks also flew between Trump and Jeb Bush when the issue of Bush's wife was brought up. Did Mr. Trump go too far in invoking your wife? He did. He did. Um, you're proud of your family, just as I am, Correct. to subject my wife into the middle of a raucous political conversation was completely inappropriate. And I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. know her. And this she is, is a total absolutely the love of my life, of and she's right here. And why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her? No, I won't right do now. that because I said nothing yeah. wrong, but I do hear so she's a lovely woman. So here's well, they, they should have just brought her up on the stage or have her fall from the ceiling, you know, with all the, the CNN needed some more showbiz elements. So back to you, Mark. What did you make of the exchange? Should well, Trump have apologized? Well, again, I mean, he basically said that, uh, that Jeb Bush's immigration policy is the way it is because his wife's Mexican. That's pretty a strong statement. I thought Jeb Bush was right to ask for an apology, and, and Donald Trump was true to form. He didn't. I, to me, uh, what happened later, which we're going to get to with Carly Fiorina, was even worse. But what it shows is Donald Trump is someone who is not reflective, who well, doesn't back off, and it, it doesn't make him look very More of seeing. his character, right, Jack? More of the character? Yeah, you're seeing, more as the Democrats in the form of Mark here are already getting ready to run against Trump. Oh, no, 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 no. They're, I want la Trump they're starting to, to laser focus no, on no, Trump. No, no, no. I still think it's going to be Jeb they're, Bush. Go, Donald, go. Remember, I, I was, I was remember what we said all along one. this campaign season, and that is Donald Trump has some brilliant advisors. Donald Trump himself is a very bright guy. They know that there will come a time when they have to dial it back. The question is when they will dial it back. I think you saw, I agree with Mark, I think you saw the beginnings of that, uh, the beginnings of that on Wednesday night. You haven't seen much. Well, now, there will come a time, just as you say, it has yes. to get more when, serious. When, if it's not too late. All right, let's move on to Carly Fiorina. After a last minute change to polling requirements, the former Hewlett Packard executive was added to the main stage where she responded to Trump's earlier comments, would anyone vote for that face? 
You know, it's interesting to me, Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. It was a powerful moment. All right, Jack, did Fiorina win this round with Trump? Yeah, she won the round. She did very well in that she largely stayed away from women's issues. In part more, she did what people were not expecting her to do. They expected her to fire out on this feminist thing and come at Trump. But for that one quip, she really didn't do that. She did a very smart thing. She talked about defense. And as a woman, as a female candidate, you want to seem strong. You want to get into an area where people would not expect you to get into. She gave a lot of specifics on defense. My only criticism of her performance is she got a little geeky. It went into too many details. Uh, well, like she mentioned names. She mentioned a lot of Middle East too much, names. And, too yeah. much, but she did overall did well. Analysts say Fiorina was the star of the night. Mark, she's built her campaign on being the one to go up against Hillary Clinton. Could she do it? Oh, I know. I no, know, because she was such a failure at Hewlett Packard. In fact, her worst moment of the debate was, in fact, her discussion of her tenure. There. Why was she if, a failure at Hewlett Packard? She was someone that's going to try to get into this race. She, she lost the Senate race, and she failed so badly at Hewlett Packard that she was Why fired. Why did she fail at Hewlett she Packard? Fired. She fired. She brought the company down. I mean, the, the company's done very well only since she's left. But let me, let me bring back to the point of that moment, though, because it was a signature moment. It was the most powerful moment of the debate. And what I found most interesting is after she delivered that line perfectly and looked straight ahead, Donald Trump tried to almost apologize. He did so exactly the wrong way. You didn't play the clip, but the part that followed it was where he said, no, you're a beautiful woman, Carly. Right. You're, you're beautiful. The, the reason why that was so tone deaf well, is, is, is the whole point you, was You that, have to remember no, no, the centerpiece, though. This is, this but, is important, Jack. Yeah, but see, Mark, you've got to remember a couple Jack, things. The wait, centerpiece. Jack, Jack, let me finish. This is real important. And then you can make your point. The whole point of why his, his comment was wrong was not that Carly Fiorina was beautiful or ugly. The point is her look are irrelevant to her stance as a presidential First candidate. First of all, look, her and looks, by saying me. you're a beautiful woman, he showed he didn't get it. Let he me tell thought you people were attacking him for saying she was ugly, First of all, rather than bringing up looks Okay, in the first place. Jack, real quick. First of all, her looks are not irrelevant. Secondly, you have to remember the centerpiece of Trump's campaign is the war on political correctness. So he, in some sense, is in a box. He can't start apologizing and retreating. Otherwise, he loses the centerpiece of his whole campaign. And wouldn't that be something you talk about that she's not the one to go up against Hillary, but being, you know, former CEO of Hewlett Packard and Compaq Computer. What if Hillary's server was HP or Compaq? Then you got another, <laughs> then you got something going here. Right. Noticeably quiet during the debate was Dr. Ben Carson. The week before he had been polling just behind Trump, but many say he didn't come out fighting. Jack, were you surprised by his performance? No, not surprised. That's his shtick. I mean, Carson has done extremely well. He just kind of d uh, does what he always did. I mean, in some sense, if you're Donald Trump, the fact that the next two people are, are Ben Carson and Carly Fiorina you like that because these are two candidates without national organizations. Now, they have the money, they're getting the oxygen and the exposure to build national organizations. But believe me, if you're Trump, you would much rather have Ben Carson and Carly Fiorina nipping at your heels than Marco Rubio and Rand Paul nipping at your heels. I thought Ben Carson put people to sleep last night. He couldn't have been more boring or more sleepy. Mark, so who won the debate? Did anyone jump out I, as I think a Carly challenger Fiorina, to your party? I think Carly Fiorina did win the debate. I still don't think she's a challenge to Hillary Clinton. But in terms of this debate, yeah, I think she won. If there are winners, then there must be losers. Jack, who lost? Oh, Huckabee. For some reason, Mike Huckabee is just fading away. I don't know. I really can't even explain it. He's fading away. Rubio, I think, and most people say he did well, but he suffers from two great afflictions. One is just looking too young, which he can't control. The other thing, more importantly, is he's just too serious. I mean, he couldn't muster Well, he's trying singer. to compensate by, be, by being green, you know what, behind the ears, don't you think? By acting so, yeah, acting it just, so serious. Yeah, I, I think Rubio, Rubio, with every word, confirms the notion that he's just too young to run for office. I don't think he should have given up the Senate. I think Huckabee's the big loser. Uh, I think he's out of it. I do think Lindsey Graham at the kids' table uh, may have emerged. All right. I agree. Lindsey Graham did well at the kiddie table. There's I think Huckabee. actually Marco Rubio did well. To me, Scott Walker, where is he? Who even talks about him anymore? Yeah. People used to talk about him as a front runner or number two. Talk radio all the time. Oh, he was going to be the savior. He's almost nowhere anymore. now. And yeah. I think Jeb Bush had a particularly weak night. Uh, he's still the front runner in my view, but I think he gets weaker by the moment. All right, before we go, let's talk about Governor Chris Christie. During a lighthearted moment of the debate, the candidates were asked what their Secret Service code name would be if they were president. Here's what Christie said. <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been called a lot of names by a lot of different people. Now I've got to get called by names by the Secret Service. Um, I would just say true heart. 
Ah, but his choice is already taken by a Care Bear. The news quickly went viral with this photo pop popping up all over the internet. So guys, I'm going to ask you the same question. What would your Secret Service code name be? Jack? Oh my goodness, Morris. I don't know. That's a tough one. My, my fiance calls me uh, Puma as I pound, oh. so I will say uh, Puma. All right, not bad, Mark. Well, uh, Jeb Bush said he was ever ready, and Donald Trump said he was humble. So, in that ironic measure, I would call myself bashful. Not bad. I think I'd just go with anchorman. Irony of ironies. <laughs> okay. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Thank Mars you Mark. And Jack. Thank you, guys. We can.